Hi, and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you something I bought myself on Prime Day at Amazon. I bought a tester so that I can test components of my CV, such as the capacitors, diodes, uh, and resistors. And I picked this up on Amazon, I think on Prime Day, it was normally 35, and I think I paid 27 for it. So I was just gonna give a quick overview of it and show you the test meter in action. Now I have over here an old JC Penny 23 channel CV, and I took some of the components out of it. Um, these actually didn't come out of it. They were out of another radio where I had changed the capacitors. But I thought we could take a look and test a couple different type of capacitors. The most common here, and these, these are usually the ones that go out, are the electrolytic um, type of capacitor. So we'll go ahead and test those. And I also took off of my test unit over here, I took out a ceramic capacitors and usually these don't go out and then over here i have a couple diodes we're going to test and then i have a resistor here we'll test now my test meter here it goes all the way from two let's see 200 picofarads all the way up to 2000 farads which should be fine for uh, most CB radios that I work on unless I have a capacitor with a, um, like a 110 power supply, then it might have a larger, a larger value than my meter over here can read. And then the other meter we're going to look over here today, the other setting, we're going to look at testing well actually two other settings we're going to look at testing our resistors and then over here this is where we test where is it right here right here is where we test our diodes now this meter is pretty cool right here it has a screen that will flip up so you can see it better if you get a reading you can push this here push this button here and it will hold your reading and then let's see also it has it has plugs here or at least where you can plug in your um your capacitor or your diode and then it also comes with different clips has clamps kind of a tweezer one here to read components and then some leads here you can touch uh, touch to the components. All right, let's go ahead and power our meter on. We have the screen flipped up so we can read it. And let's start with our capacitor, our capacitors over here, our electro electrolytic type capacitors. So we're going to test these. All right, our first capacitor is 1,000 farads. So, to test this one, and the first one we have is 1,000 farads. So, on our scale over here, we have to pick the right scale or the right setting here. So, it's going to be between 200 and 2,000. Now, on these, on the capacitors here you can see there's a there's a negative and a positive side and the negative always has a color stripe down here so that's how we know where the negative is and then on our test probe here let's find the negative oops can't see it here negative positive so we're going to take the negative and we're going to go ahead and connect it there. It should be a thousand and it's uh, 911. 
And if we wanted to freeze it, we could do a hold here. And I believe on the capacitors, if you're within 10%, you're okay, which that would be right around 9%. So that capacitor would be good. All right, let's look at our next one. We have 330. So it's going to be on, it's going to fall between 200 and 2000. So same thing. So let's get our negative, put it in there. And we are at 340, right around 340, which is totally acceptable. All right, we've got two smaller ones here. Let's see if we can see what this one is. Let's see if we can focus it. There we go. This one's a lot harder to see. Okay. This one is 10 farads. So let's go ahead and go to our meter here. And we're gonna have to set it to, it'll fall between two and 20, so we'll put it on 20. And then we'll line up the negative again, put it in here. And we get a reading of 9.6. Totally acceptable. Now we're going to go down to our last one here, which is point four seven farads. I don't know if we can. There we go. All right, so we're going to go to point four seven. On our test meter here, it's going to be between 200 nanofarads and 2 farads. So we will set it to 200 nanofarads. All right. So let's find the negative side. Put it on. Oops, my mistake, we went on two farads. All right, there we go. 0.45, that one's almost spot on. So those four capacitors were um, within specs. Next here, we have a ceramic capacitor. Like I said, these usually don't go out. But let's go ahead and look at the value on here. You can see this, I can't really read that. Looks like a 151K. Now, um, we have to convert that to farads. So um, to save you the math here, that equals, after I convert it, that is 0.15 nanofarads. So we're going to have to go down here and we'll put it on 2 nanofarads. And we're going to have to change the leads on this also. So I'm going to go ahead and put the leads on here. that are alligator clips. And we'll go ahead and clip it on. And see what we get. All right. And I said we wanted to get 0.15 nanofarads, and look at that, almost spot on, 0.152. So um, this capacitor is good.
All right, so we have the selector now set on diodes. I haven't worked with diodes that much, but I do know when you test them, you want to make sure the line here, that would mark the negative side of the diode. Diodes only allow electricity to flow in one direction. And I believe these two diodes are rated around half a volt. So what we can do here is we can use this little nifty spot on our tester where we just plug it in here and we have them on the negative and there we go pretty close to half a volt 0.515 now, if I were to plug it in the other direction, we're going to get an error because, like I said, the electricity, they only allow electricity to flow in one direction. And the one is the error symbol or outer range symbol. So we know this diode is good because it's only allowing electricity in one direction. Okay, then we'll do our other diode here. Now these I actually bought on eBay. These were, I found some old stock. When I was working on one of my CBs, I broke the diode, so I had to order some more. And I had to buy them in bulk. <laughs> so I have a bunch of these sitting around. So let's go ahead and plug this one in. And again, we're right around half a volt. And then if we wanted to make sure it was working correctly, we could flip it around this way and we should get an out of range error, which we do. So we know that diode's not working. You might be hearing this tinkling of water in the, in the background. And this is my um, aero garden, hydroponic garden, and I'm growing some lettuce here. I just put this in yesterday so if you're hearing a watery noise uh, <laughs> that's what you're listening to all right and the last thing I was going to demo here is a resistor radios have a lot of resistors on them and they come with these color color bands on them Let's see if we can and how you read these are by the color bands. They have different values. Um, I'm not going to go in the math on this one, but the value on this particular resistor, let's see, it's a yellow, purple, red. I can't quite see the last one, but I did calculate it. And this is going to be 4,700 ohms is going to be the value on this one. All right. So like I said, we measure resistors in ohms. So we're going to go over here to my meter. So I, what I did here is I bent the ends over. I really like the tweezer ones here. And if we go ahead and clamp it on there, we can see it's 4.6. Um, we need to move the decimal, decimal point over, so that would come out to 4,700. So this one's um, pretty close, um, definitely within tolerance. So that one's good. So that's it for today. There you have it. My nifty little test meter for only $27 allows me to test a lot more components on the circuit board than um, just my multimeter that I have. So I just want to add, you know, I want to add equipment to my bench over here so I can start working on these radios better. My goal is to get... Um, the road talker over here working again. I believe that's the PLL. You can also test those. And to get this old radio working again too, to figure out why I have no modulation. It's a work in progress. I'm definitely learning electronics. 
you know, I, I have a pretty good grasp of things and pick up things pretty quickly. Um, if I did mess up something here, go ahead and let me know. Like I said, this is new to me. So it's going to be a little sloppy. I'm going to make mistakes in the beginning. But um, I have done capacitors on probably eight or nine radios, and they all worked after I was done. So I got that going in my favor. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.